Thanks for joining us here at AG Kolkata. We are the church for the open arms and we serve in the city of joy, Kolkata. It is our desire to reach out to those in need and to be instruments of effective change in a hurting world. If you like to learn more about us, you can simply go to www.agkolkata.org. We hope that you'll enjoy today's message. Our theme for Faith Promise this year is Let Us Start Rebuilding. And I want us to read two verses from Nehemiah chapter 2, verse 17 and 18. It says like this, Then I say, said, that is Nehemiah is talking here, Then I said to them, You see the trouble we are in. Jerusalem lies in ruins, and its gates have been burned with fire. Come, let us rebuild the wall of Jerusalem, and we will no longer be in disgrace. I also told them about the gracious hand of my God on me and what the king had said to me. They replied, let us start rebuilding. So they began this good work. Friends, while we build buildings to facilitate God's work, but our calling is to build lives. Build People, people matter to God and he wants them to find their purpose in him. God wants to help people to find authentic relationship with him. You would recall Jesus' words to his disciples. I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. What is Jesus talking about here? Not building buildings, but his church. And his church comprises people from who, for whom he died. And these people now share a relationship with him like you and I do this morning. The reality is, we encounter broken lives and broken people every day and everywhere. Whether it's in Picnic Garden whether it's in Park Street, whether it's in Newtown, we encounter them every day and every way, everywhere, friends. We pass them by each day and do nothing to reach out to them. But Jesus loves them. Jesus died on the cross for them. And Jesus is still in the business of touching broken lives and making something beautiful out of their lives. Faith promise gives us an opportunity to reach out to these people with the love and hope that Jesus offers. Today, I want us to look at the life of Nehemiah. Nehemiah teaches principles that will help us rebuild ruin and broken lives, friends. So let's look at Nehemiah chapter 1. And Nehemiah is right there in chapter 1 is introduced as the cupbearer to the king Artaxerxes in Persia, which is modern Iran. Nehemiah goes down in history, friends. I will not have time to go through everything from the book of Nehemiah, but I want you to read the book of Nehemiah and you'll understand he goes down in history as one who saw the need and did something about it. Many in our world are passive when they see the needs around them, but not Nehemiah. Nehemiah will always be remembered for hearing about the need, seeing the need and doing something about the need. You see, the greatness of Nehemiah is seen in the first few verses of chapter 1. He stopped and asked the visitors from Judah, how are things going in the land? This was not a casual or routine question, friends. It was a question asked with deep concern. Nehemiah was informed by those few people who came from Judah that people who returned from their exile to Jerusalem were in great trouble and distress. 
walls of jerusalem were broken down gates were burned but as we read the account it is so interesting we find out if nehemiah wanted he could have stayed in the comfort of the palace in susa but he did not he was willing to pay the cost to reach out to his people in need in trouble in distress we are told nehemiah embarked on a building project of rebuilding the walls and restoring the gates of jerusalem in a record time of 52 days this morning i want to share with you three motivations from the life of nehemiah the first motivation nehemiah's life of intercession it is very interesting that the overarching compelling trust in nehemiah's life is centered around these three simple actions friends nehemiah heard nehemiah saw nehemiah did the first thing nehemiah did when he heard about the ruined walls broken gates and distressed people of juda and jerusalem was he fasted and prayed to the god of heavens before nehemiah turns to the king of persia he turns to the god who rules above all earthly powers yes friends needs will always be there even today but we must turn to god before we turn to anyone else he is the ultimate source he is our provider and philippians chapter 4 verse 19 we are reminded and my god shall meet all your needs according to his glorious riches in christ jesus friends nehemiah was conscious that he would need the help of the king but the help of the earthly king is worthless without the help of our god the king of kings the lord of lords it is here as nehemiah turned to god in prayer a burden was born god moved his heart to do something about the need that he heard about nehemiah's moist eyes empty stomach he fasted bended knees and heavy heart shaped him to be unflinching to the daunting task before him listen to what alan redpath said friends and i want you to listen there is so much uh, that uh, you know stirs you up as you listen to this great man writing something he says we are fit for the work of god only when we have wept over prayed about it and then we are enabled by him to tackle the job that needs to be done may god give us hearts that bleed eyes that are wide open to see minds that are clear to interpret god's purpose uh, wills that are obedient and a determination that is unflinching as we set about the task he would have us do friends Nehemiah's life motivates us to make intercession the foundation for everything concerning our lives today in this faith promise service we covet your prayers more than anything else friends we want to be a praying church that will not miss out God's purpose and the opportunity to reach out to the lost I believe with all my heart and I'm convinced that God will not fail or deprive a praying church and praying people. You know how many yes you want to celebrate that's because that is what we believe as a church as people that worship here. You know how many of you will commit yourself to pray with the pastoral team for the unreached regions in our state of west bengal how many of you will do that friends uh, you know everything begins with prayer the burden begins with prayer the giving begins with prayer and i'm inviting us to pray for the unreached areas in the state of west bengal we are praying for the region of malda 
you probably heard this many many mission sunday you know and if god burdens you or you know of someone that has a vision for malda please talk to one of the pastors the second motivation nehemiah's life of involvement that is the second motivation in the book of nehemiah we read that nehemiah moved from hearing to seeing nehemiah came to jerusalem after getting permission from the king he inspected the ruins and called the leaders to talk to them and again i want us to read that beautiful verses 17 and 18 then i said to them you see the trouble we are in Jerusalem lies in ruins and the and its gates have been burned with fire come let us rebuild the wall of Jerusalem and we will no longer be in disgrace i also told them about the gracious hand of my god on me and what the king had said to me they replied let us start rebuilding so they began this good work friends uh, listen to me here is a good principle to follow and i want you to listen to me when it comes to kingdom purpose and kingdom need talk to god first and then to his people talk to god and talk to his people today my talk to you is based on this principle friends uh, i want you to listen to what the people said to nehemiah they said let us start rebuilding so they began this good work listen to me very carefully friends kingdom work cannot be done alone we must all be involved <laughs> nehemiah points out that god's work must not remain in the talking stage but should move to the doing stage friends and i want to just ask you today to consider what is before us in our faith promise i want god to burn this response of the people to nehemiah deeply in our hearts today friends the response from this church would be let us start rebuilding so they began this good work doing or advancing the kingdom purpose is always good work even if people around us may not admit it friends they did not do in nehemiah's time and some people will not do it in our time but it's always a good work as we do and advance the kingdom of god you see nehemiah has a plan to fix the walls and he involves every one of god's people in judah now dl moody a pastor once said and i want you to listen is coming up on the screen he said if everybody would sweep the area in front of their home then the whole street would be clean no one person can do everything but every person can do something friends let us do something instead of doing nothing in the world there are a lot of spectators do you agree with me there are a lot of spectators friends as christ followers our calling is not to be spectators but to get involved get involved to be the channel by the power of god to help people come out of darkness into his marvelous light get involved to take care of the poor the orphans the widows and the destitute get involved to bring healing and hope in jesus name to the hurting and despair get in involved to be the voice for the voiceless friends nehemiah and the people with him go down in history for their remarkable involvement in spite of the challenges opposition ridicule and threat listen to this thought provoking insight shared by somebody friends he says i believe most churches in existence today fall into one of two categories there are rise and build churches then there are recline and decline churches on this faith promise sunday we are reaching out to you 
to get involved and do something to advance the kingdom purpose friends let us not be the church that will recline and decline but let us be the church that will rise and build i want you to look at your brother or sister seated next to you and i know that you know there's time running out but do that friends look at your brother or sister or even sister to sister or brother to brother just tell them you know rise and build my brother or tell rise and build my sister you said it with conviction amen that is a calling today the third motivation nehemiah's life of investment you see nehemiah not only used his time effort and energy to rebuild the ruins of jerusalem but also his resources listen to this account in nehemiah chapter 5 verse 17 to 19 furthermore 150 jews and officials ate at my table as well as those who came to us from the surrounding nations each day one ox six choice sheep and some poultry were prepared for me and every 10 days an abundant supply of wine of all kinds in spite of all this i never demanded the food allotted to the governor because the demands were heavy on these people remember me with favor my god for all i have done for these people friends from god's perspective involvement with investment is incredible when god looks at the people in this church on this mission or faith promise sunday and when you and i pledge our involvement and go beyond that to saying i am going to invest in the kingdom purpose god says you are incredible people you know no one who has invested in the kingdom purpose has ever regretted friends i'm yet to come across one if you have come across one please tell me i'll talk to them what is it our best investment is in god's work yes we will challenge and we will tell you as people invest wisely wherever you need to you know it's a good thing for you and for your family but the best investment is in god's work friends nehemiah led his people from the front in giving to the work of god you know god doesn't need our money but he needs our obedience when we give we reflect the nature of god john chapter 3 verse 16 past jacob has pointed that to us expresses uh, giving began with god friends god set the standard when it came to giving he gave the best and he gave it all he gave the best and he gave it all the giving must always be a good good thing giving must always be a god and me thing also never about what people say don't think what people will say if i don't fill up a card no friends that's why i'm asking you to talk to god that's why i'm talking to god and i've talked to god and our pastoral team has talked to god and we are talking to his people it's about uh, you and god never about what people say your generosity can be the key to reaching our part of the world with the gospel but i hear is a misconception that needs to be dispelled and if you have this misconception or the world out there has a misconception this has to be dispelled friends uh, you and i being involved in missions or taking the gospel is not spreading religion it is joining god in his plan to reveal his love to every tribe every tongue every people friends how many of us believe that every tribe every tongue every people have the right to hear the gospel friends and i do it friends adults young people children have the right to hear about the love of jesus our faith 
promise focuses on gospel for all. Your giving through your faith promise will bring the blessing of the gospel to all people. As I was preparing my message for today, I was shaken by the truth. In Luke chapter 16, verse 27 and 28, this is a story Jesus told in his teaching about the rich man and Lazarus. I want you to go back and read this uh, passage, friends. Now, Lazarus the beggar dies and finds himself in the bosom of Abraham. The rich man dies and finds himself in torment in hell. I want you to listen to the rich man in verse 27 and 28. Listen, friends. He answered, he's talking, okay, to Abraham. He answered and said this. Then I beg you, Father, send Lazarus to my family. For I have five brothers. Let him warn them so that they will not also come to this place of torment. Friends, listen to this frightening and unsettling truth. Are you ready for it, friends? It will shake you like it did to me. And listen to this. The condemned of hell believe more in missions than God's people. Think about it, friends. The condemned of hell believe more in missions than God's people. If you believe in missions, then what are you doing about it? How are you going to respond to your faith promise pledge today? Casually? Just another thing on the calendar that we come to every year. Or prayerfully and seriously. The story I'm going to share with you is taken you know, it took place in the modern times. It's told in Ron Blue's book, Generous Living, published in 1997. It is a story of a Christian woman named Ruby. I want you to listen to this even as we wrap up and bring the service to a close. It says, Ruby's husband, Bob, was dying of cancer. Fifteen years earlier, he had started a company that manufactured water treatment chemicals. Now, in his waning days, his adult daughter had to quit her teaching job to help with the business along with Bob's wife, Ruby. Ruby knew business was slow, but she was shocked to find out from her daughter that the company was actually on the verge of bankruptcy. Some bills for 36 months overdue. Bob had kept the problems a secret to avoid burdening her. But now the truth was out. As she began to pray about the desperate condition of the business, God impressed upon her something that she had previously learned from God's word about giving. She sensed from God that she was supposed to start giving from the business account. She asked her husband's permission and he agreed they had nothing to lose. Ruby went to the company secretary and told her, write a check for dollars 1000 to their church. The longtime secretary protested that there was really no money in the account and there were many bills that should be paid first if they had the money. But Ruby insisted and the check went out. The next week, Bob died. It wasn't until a month later that Ruby went back to the company she now owned. She asked the secretary what happened to the check that was written to the church. She replied, Ruby, you won't believe this, but there was somehow enough money in the account to cover it. Right? Another one, Ruby said. Never, the secretary said. But Ruby prevailed as the owner. And for a whole year, they contributed dollars 1,000 a month. The checks just barely clearing, clearing each month. 
the following year the business began to flourish and in the next year the past bills that were due got paid ruby increased the company giving to the point where at the time of writing of ron blues book they were giving dollars 20000 a month to the ministry purpose this morning i must ask myself and you the same question are you tight fisted or open handed when it comes to giving to god's work by now it must be very clear to you we are a missions church as a missions church can we pray a little harder can we do a little more can we give a little more in fact i told you earlier giving must always be god and me thing we're not going to tell you anything god is going to in faith impress upon your hearts as i bring my message to a close here this quote of william william wilberforce we can choose to look the other way but never again can we say we did not know we have told you in this from the beginning about the mission sunday and what it does and so you cannot say you did not know but you can choose to look the other way but if your heart is connected to god whatever it is even the little is saying god i understood your message your heart and i will do what it takes so that the unfinished task before me is finished before you come thanks for listening to this message from ag kolkata we hope you would stay connected by following us online you can find us on facebook twitter and instagram by using at @agc kolkata we would love to know how this message has touched your life please take a moment to share your story by emailing us at stories@agkolkata.org at hope you have a great week ahead